local people, important issues. CBS 10 WILM's weekly focus on the Lower Cape Fear region. This is Byline Wilmington with your host, Don Enzel. The interview you're about to see with the director of the North Carolina State Lottery talks about the close to $1 billion the lottery has raised for education in North Carolina. But that was taped just before Governor Perdue announced that $88 million of the lottery funds have been transferred to the state's general fund to help cover the North Carolina state revenue shortfall. We'll have an update for you with a statement by the lottery director on the governor's decision. Here now is that interview. Welcome and uh, thank you for joining us. In August of uh, 2005, Governor Easley signed into law the controversial North Carolina Lottery Act to benefit public education. Sales began in March of 06, so it's just about in its third year of operation. Well, how's it doing? That's what we're taking a look at on this edition of Byline with our guest, Thomas uh, Shaheen. He's the executive director of the North Carolina State Lottery Commission. Tom, thanks for coming down. Thank you. Actually, you have a, a local connection because you have a place over at Carolina Beach. Yes, uh, we uh, found a second home here, and so we've been fixing it up. Oh, we appreciate you. Uh, you joining us. So you came on board, I believe it was November of 05? Yes, November of 05. And how did all that come about? The job uh, was advertised pretty quickly after the Lottery Act was passed at the end of August. And uh, since I've been in the lottery business, at the time it was more than 20 years, uh, several people applied. Uh, I thought about it and uh, sent in an application. Did the area, were you interested in this? Yes, in the I'm, state you know, I've spent a lot of years in, in this area, several years in Georgia and Florida, and this is part of the country we really like. Now, you previously, previously headed up the New Mexico. Yes, I was there five and a half efforts. years in Albuquerque. And worked in the Georgia Lottery. Right, uh, Texas and Florida. And Texas and Florida. Yes. And there's some interesting statistics that you shared with me before we went on camera. We, uh, are, we have surpassed $3 billion in sales at the North Carolina Education Lottery, and we did that in less than three years. And as far as we know, there's only four other lotteries that did that in the United States, and that is Georgia, Texas, Florida, and California, and now North Carolina. And if you've been involved in three of them. I've been lucky enough to be involved in, in three of them. I, 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 met, I Billboarding the show, I said the controversial North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, State Lottery Act. Uh, the passage of the act by the General Assembly um, surrounding that, there was some pretty strong controversy. Uh, first of all, were you aware of that when you you took the job? Yes. Uh, Did it concern you? Uh, yes. You know, in, when you're in the lottery business, it's kind of a small business, and everybody follows everything. And uh, yes, I was aware of uh, all of that. But uh, is I that was typical? Is it typical when a, a, a state is going to institute a lottery that there's controversy about it? Well, there's always a certain group of people that do not believe in lotteries and are against it. And then, you know, and then w as they're trying to get these types of things passed, there's uh, several conflicts that evolve. But yes, I was aware of it. Um, and, and how much input did you have on how the North Carolina, uh, North Carolina lottery would be organized and, and play out? The legislation pretty much described the structure of the organization, that it's an independent state agency um, overseen by a lottery commission. So that what was about all the games? The, the games, that's pretty much been up to me. Um, that was uh, based on the experience that I have had. Uh, I put together a marketing plan before I came here and uh, how we ought to introduce games and, and when. Um, and I don't know that our viewers know how the lottery is administered. Uh, there's a, a a lottery commission. Yes, we have a nine-member commission. Five of the members are appointed by the governor, two by the Senate, and two by the House. And one of them has to be a CPA, another one has to have five years of law enforcement background, and one of them has to have sales and marketing background, and the remaining six can be of various backgrounds. And how long do they serve? They serve staggered terms, and uh, but once the stagger, staggering is over, the terms are five years. And those are paid? No, they are not paid. not paid. These are volunteers out of the community uh, working to help uh, raise money for education. Were the other state lotteries that you were involved in, were they uh, for education? Yes. They all were. Uh, New Mexico, uh, all the money went to scholarships. And then prior to that, Georgia, the money went to uh, three or four different programs, scholarships primarily. 
Uh, Florida uh, was general education, and Texas at the time I was there was 1992. At that time it was general fund, but they have since moved uh, to specific education programs. Do you know how many states are operating lotteries today? Uh, there are, let's see, 42 states in Washington, D.C., and soon Arkansas will be on board, so that leaves seven, that, uh, uh, seven states that are not in lottery. Now, Tickets are bought at, at outlets, local outlets. Mm -hmm. um, how are the outlets established or decided on for where these tickets will be available? Well, by law, anybody who's in business uh, is uh, eligible to sell lottery tickets. The only thing they can't do is just be in business to sell lottery tickets. But if you're in business uh, selling anything else or offering any other services, um, you are eligible to apply to be a lottery retailer, but you have to go through and pass a financial and, and, and credit and background check uh, before you're approved. Um, is there a revenue benefit for, for the outlets? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I know it'll drive traffic. It drives traffic to the store. Them. Retailers are uh, currently earning 7% commission on every ticket sold. Uh, that is among the highest in the in the country as far as base commission. So it's based on sales. Based on seven percent of sales. Yes, and it drives traffic to the store. And our most successful retailers, uh, almost to a T, will tell you that they are successful because it drives traffic to their store and it helps increase uh, overall business for them. And there's not a finite, or is there a finite number of outlets that can uh, that can sell lottery tickets or? If they pass, uh, as long as they can pass the background check background and, and they're providing another service, or, or, or then they can. Do you have any handle on how many outlets you have around? We the state? have about fifty nine hundred and thirty right now, and uh, we continue to get applications uh, uh, on a weekly basis. Uh, some some new applications come in, others go away. Uh, some of the places have gone out of business. Some of them have felt that. It wasn't as profitable as they anticipated. So it, it, it goes up and down, but it's been steadily over 5,900 for the last couple of years. Um, are they regulated? And, and uh, Yes. How, uh, I know you can't go into detail, but well, the, uh, give us know, some overview. We have, you know, uh, we have alcohol and law enforcement that goes around and visits the stores and um, checks for you know, sales to minors. Uh, they also check on the uh, lottery license being, being sales displayed. to minors of lottery tickets. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have to be eighteen years of age. Eighteen to buy a lottery yes. ticket. Any any other uh, major uh, regulation? No, I mean we you know we monitor the you know we monitor the financial end of it and whether they're you know paying their you know making their weekly payments on time and uh, that's all regulated by us at the lottery. Uh, any uh, Consumer complaints uh, regarding retailers are dealt with through our lottery security division, and we uh, we address those immediately. And Do you have uh, much of that? We get uh, we get a handful every week, uh, and a lot of times, a lot of times it's uh, misunderstandings. Uh, sometimes players think that they've won more money than they really did, and uh, other times uh, store clerks may have paid them incorrectly. Uh, but we can go in and verify that, that all of that information uh, relatively quickly, and uh, we we resolve 99.9% .9 of the concerns uh, uh, probably within a couple weeks. All right, we're going to uh, take a short break. Uh, we'll come back with our guest, uh, uh, Tom uh, Shaheen, who is uh, the executive director of the North Carolina State Lottery Commission. By the way, if you go to wilm-tv.com, you can click on uh, the lottery icon there, and it'll take you to the the North Carolina Education Lottery uh, website. We'll be right back. Stay with us.